I got a call from a homeowner. They'd like their old switch for their outside light and their dimmer switch for a can light above a fireplace changed out. She wants to switch to a decor instead of the toggle and a newer style dimmer switch. She also got a new LED eyeball can light above the fireplace and this will accommodate that. I'll show you how to do it. First thing we're going to do is go to the breaker box and turn off the breaker. With the breaker off, this knob just pulls straight out and we'll remove the screws for the cover plate. And the screw for the switch. And the old dimmer switch. And we can pull these out so we can access the wires. Now we want to double check and make sure that the power is off. I've got this voltage tester and these are real handy. Not very expensive depending on where you go. I think I got it for under $10 at Harbor Freight. You just push this button when the power's on. We'll turn the breaker back on. Beeps and flashes when you get near power. The problem is it's so sensitive I can't tell which line is hot. We'll turn the power back off and with the power off we've got no reading which is good so we can go ahead and work on it. Alright, I'm not a licensed electrician but I will explain this wiring to you in layman's terms. You've got a hot wire coming from the panel that feeds this switch and the dimmer switch. And then you've got a wire that goes, this is the hot lead coming in, I think. And then they pigtailed it and ran it over to the dimmer. Then this other wire, these are both black even though the paint got on it. This other wire is going to the light fixture. This goes to the outside light and this one here goes up to the eyeball can light up there. So you got power coming in when the switch is down, off, it disconnects that in here so you're not getting power through this to go to the light. When you switch that on, it completes the connection and gets the power to the light or to the can light in this case. So I'm going to take this apart. Now they use these press fittings in here and I don't like these and a lot of people don't like them. Some places it doesn't meet code but you can just take a little screwdriver or an ice pick and you press in next to that hole and they pop out. So this one here goes to the light I think and this one that's pigtailed comes from the panel. I'm going to turn the power on and test it just to make sure. And now I'm going to try to confirm which of these leads is the power coming from the panel. I got nothing up here. I'm pretty confident that's our hot lead there from the panel. But a better way to test that that's not so sensitive and is very direct is to use a multimeter, turn it to AC volts. We can go to 200 because we should be getting 120 there. So I've got that set on AC volts, 200. I'll go ahead and turn it on and I'm going to touch the black lead to the ground wire and the red lead to the black wire. We got nothing there and testing the other one. Uh, 123. So we got 120 volts to this wire here. So now we know that's our hot lead. I'm going to go turn the breaker back off and I'm going to label that. That's the power from the panel. Our white wires aren't involved at all on these switches. These are the white wires here. 
It just tied them all together, common wire, and tucked it in back. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up to the ground. I'm gonna make a pigtail so I can hook grounds up to both this switch and the new dimmer switch. Most home wiring is 14.2 or 14.3 wire, which is a lighter gauge wire, and it's written on the insulation. This is 14 gauge wire here. Get about six inches for a pigtail and cut that off. Now I'm going to make a second pigtail and all you need to do is start cutting the insulation a little bit and then you can just hold the wires and pull that and it peels it back. And now we'll take our pigtails tie them in here with the ground wires and these nice big pliers come in handy. Got a nice end on there. Otherwise you can trim it. Just pop the end. Put the wire knot on. Twist it. I get, like to get it nice and tight. Now we'll just tuck this back in. And we can hook up our pigtails. Wouldn't have hurt if I made these longer. It's a little short. Okay, first we'll take care of the dimmer and just gonna disconnect this old one, remove the wire nuts, and this one goes to the light, and this one down here is our load line or power line. So we've got that disconnected. And now we can hook our new one up. On this new dimmer switch, we've got four wires. The green wires for the ground goes to the bare wire. The black and red wire are for the power hotline and also up to the light fixture. This can be used for a three-way or a single light. We don't have a three-way switch here, so I'm not going to use this wire. We'll keep it taped up, and we're just going to use these two wires here. Okay, I usually do the ground first, and just twist that on here. And you want this twisted wire to stick out just a little bit, so when you put the wire nut on, it grabs it, and it'll hold it. Get it on nice and tight, and then you want to pull on it. Make sure you got a good tight connection, which we do. Next one I'll hook up is the black, and that goes to our power panel. Again, the same thing. Just twist that on there. And we got a larger wire nut here because there's three wires. Again, you want to pull on it. Make sure you got a good tight connection, which we do. The last one is our red wire, and that's going up to the light. Again, we twist that together, wrap it around there, and I've got it sticking past the other one just a little bit. That helps this grab. Get that twisted on there real good. Double check it. We're good. Now on this light switch, I'm going to wire this up a little different. I'm not going to use those push tabs. I don't like those. So I take my wire stripper and there's a little hole in there. You just stick the wire through the end of the hole and fold it around. That makes what's called a shepherd's hook or a J hook. And if you need to strip wire, you want to take 5 eighths of an inch off, or I don't know if you can see this or not, but they put a stripping gauge on the back of all switches. And there it is there, it's 5 eighths of an inch you can use that to measure if, if you need. Now on these switches, 
it'll tell you where the top is. It says top right there. So you want this in this direction. The first thing I'm going to hook up is the ground wire. And I'll hook up the ground wire first. And you want it in a clockwise orientation when you hook these up. Because when you tighten the screw, you want it to tighten around itself. If you put it the other way, as you tighten it, it's going to push it out. Now on these also, there's a little lip on that metal there. And you can rest that against the wire against that. So you get a good tight connection and it won't push around on you. Good. Now, we're going to put our hot lead on the bottom one. And again, there's a little notch there. You can rest the wire right against that. See how that sits in there real nice? And we'll snug this down. Good tight connection. Now one thing I want to point out, that 5 8 of an inch is just right, but you want to make sure that the insulation on this wire doesn't get underneath the screw. If it does, you're going to have a poor connection there, and this can get hot and be a hazard. So you want to make sure that that insulation doesn't get underneath there, and you also don't want to trim it too far back where it's sticking out, and the ground wire or another wire could touch it and short it out. It sits down in there real nice, and we'll tighten it down. And you can see again, that insulation is not underneath that screw. It's perfect. Now we'll tuck everything back in the box, and when you do this, depending on how much wire you have, but you want to kind of go in an S folding to put the wires back in so that nothing gets stressed on any of these connections and it all folds in there nice and neat. So we'll do this switch first. We've got our fold there. It's just a matter of screwing these down. And I'm going to leave it a little loose because we want to make sure that the cover plate fits before we tighten it down. Now we'll tuck this box in. And this takes up a little more room, so I'm going to get my wires all tucked in there nice. All right. Get it where it's kind of close, where I think it might be. Now you can see I've got this side in too deep, and this is a little deep too, so I've got to bring them back out. It's okay for these to be loose like this because that trim plate, when it's screwed in, will pull this towards the trim plate and hold everything in place. And the reason I had to back these off is because this uh, box is inset. wasn't ins properly installed. That looks pretty good. And if you want to do it professionally, you want to line up the screws either vertically or horizontally. You don't want them too tight, especially if you get the cheap plates. They'll crack, break. If you put it too tight. And there we go. Now let's turn the breaker back on and do one more check. Then we just wipe down any little scuff marks we got on the wall. If this video was a help to you, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And I look forward to helping you with other projects online.